activists who worked on those items and who would get, you know, little note cards saying, you know, we miss you, Remo, or, you know, we love you, Daniel, or whatever, and get thousands of those. Got secondary PTSD. I uh, would, you know, work with it. But those are the kinds of things that happen uh, in events like this. I wonder if in these closing minutes people might have other questions or thoughts. I do. Please. Um, on that point, actually, of vicarious trauma, um, to be sure, an incident of this magnitude constitutes a collective trauma. And I, I would say that this academic culture in which it occurred is the epicenter. Um, so working at a, a counseling center, I've been privy to conversations with staff about faculty members calling in saying, this student is behaving unusually and he yeah, or she spiked. could snap at any moment. Yeah. I'm really interested in the, no, like the uglier side in terms of the sociological and psychological response of hysteria and paranoia and how you go about reconstructing on a community level? Well, certainly all the mental health centers saw their utilization rates zip up, and certainly referrals um, to threat assessment teams, all that kind of crap, have risen dramatically. Um, it just takes time. There are some things you can do. Sometimes you can do psychoed. You can send out, and it often helps if you've got uh, senior people to do it. Our president was wonderful in, first of all, just sending out notes saying if you haven't gone to counseling and you think uh, you'd like to talk to somebody, do it. You just sent that out to the whole community. Um, it, you can also send out uh, information about mental health. Most people with mental illnesses are not violent, not going to be, blah, 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 blah. It never hurts uh, to do some of that, uh, to calm people down a little. I don't really worry about um, the people who are making overt threats. It's, uh, Kind of like if you have somebody running around saying they're going to kill themselves. I'm not so worried about those folks. I'm worried about the person with a big smile starts giving away his clothes. Doesn't seem like he's a danger. Same kind of thing. There was. Yes, please. It seems like the administration responded very fluidly to the students' reactions to the tragedy. And did you sense that that was relatively easy for them to do to kind of break away from? You know, my first years in academia, I spent most of my time hating administrators. Um, and I've been in tech now at 20 years. And they're a good bunch of people. Um, I've gotten to know a lot of them very well. Um, I wouldn't want their jobs, by and large. Um, now, how they came across to other people, you know, there are certainly, you know, there are two lawsuits still going on uh, against senior administrators, um, which is also part of, you know, the there were there. There's been a tragedy, somebody must be responsible. Um, but, yeah, I think they did respond pretty well. Um, and certainly, you know, a lot of what they've done has been uh, followed by other people. We were on the phone with the folks at Fort Hood. We were on a what, video conference with the folks at Fort Hood the day after their shootings. And, you know, I guess that helped. Uh, say a word there that earlier Stephanie had raised the issue of uh, prevention in a way and whether yeah. lessons can be learned they can help 
mitigate the risk of other tragedies. I think there probably are some. But one of the things that surely can be learned is how to configure a response yes. to tragedy in a way that is fluid and yes. is responsive. Whether it's a single popular student, you know, jumping off a high floor of an academic building and you know, committing suicide in a very public way, or right. whether it is an act of violence on campus that ends a life. Uh, in all of these cases, uh, some universities at least have given thought as to who will be responsible for informing whom. Yeah. Is there a central point person who will deal with media uh, and appropriately manage that scenario? Who will be responsible for first-hand contact with the victim's families? Right. Um, and you know, what will be the role of the counseling center? What will be the role of alumni and so on? And in this way, I think there are intelligent responses, and some of them are being written about. There's yes. a, a piece uh, that's been published in a journal called Death Studies that mm -hmm. systematically attempts to harvest some of these lessons in a useful way. Right. And as we move to our closing uh, minutes here, I think we need to respect people's time boundaries. Um, I just want to thank you no, on behalf certainly. of this whole community, and also to invite further dialogue, I hope, between you and members of the community. Sure. And look over here, and I see Stephanie Harder, who has done so much work in the area of trauma sure. from a personal construct standpoint, and David Winter, who has done a good deal of work in studying serial murders, and Ben Schutte, who's very concerned with violence and on this planet and restorative justice traditions. And I, I just think there are so many uh, fertile dialogues that could open up sure. uh, that you made possible today. Well, thank you. So, thank you for that.